Well, hello everyone, Dr. Vaughn, and I am going to do this video on question 18.12. This is about um, two-factor ANOVA with replication. I'm going to do this part of it in Excel, and then I'll show you how to do it in SPSS as well. Uh, you really don't want to do this by hand, although you have the formulas, and you could do it by hand if you felt like it. So first, uh, Excel, we're going to take this data. We got these two factors. One of the factors is the number of ounces of alcohol the person has uh, in, consumed. And then the other one is the sleep deprivation from zero up to 72 hours. These are just kind of calculations if you wanted to do this by hand. Uh, the variable itself that we're comparing the mean of is the number of driving errors. So in Excel, I enter the data pretty much like it's entered over here. I just have the alcohol, the sleep deprivation. I put these labels up here. It's important that you put the labels for the 0, 24, 48, 72, and 0, 1, 2, 3, because you have to have this kind of structure uh, that, that um, and, and you'll see that when you go to the data analysis tool pack. So anyway, the first part of this, they just want to do an ANOVA table. And remember, there's going to be three sets of null and alternative hypotheses. One is about whether the sleep deprivation has an impact on the number of driving errors. The means are different based upon sleep deprivation, where you don't really worry about the alcohol. And then there's going to be one whether the alcohol consumed has an impact on the number of driving errors, whether there's a significant difference there, where you're not really worrying about the sleep deprivation. And then you're testing whether there's interaction between sleep deprivation and alcohol. Maybe the more sleep deprived people are, the more the alcohol is going to affect them in terms of their driving errors. So this is a fascinating different study. There's lots of different kinds of things that we're looking at. We only have two scores in each group, uh, 0, 3, 2, 4, 5, 4, et cetera. And uh, so I'm going to set this up. And I typed in all the data already with the labels up here and uh, the labels for the alcohol and then the raw data. I'll go to Data Analysis Tool Pack. I'm going to do ANOVA two-factor with replication. I'm going to set my input range. Starting at the top left corner, I don't need to grab the label for sleep deprivation. It doesn't really matter what's in the cell B2, but I need to grab the labels together with the raw scores. So I'm going B2 through F10, and then I'm going to put two rows in each sample. Each one of these has two rows that's corresponding to the zero sleep deprivation and zero alcohol, for example, and then my alpha value of 0.03. And I want to put the output range down here on the page somewhere. Um, I'm just using cell B13. So I'm going to press OK. This is the result. It's giving you a summary, the count of how many data items you have, the sum, the average, the variance for each one of those cell by cells. This is the grouped by the alcohol consumption. And then uh, down here is the one we're really interested in, the ANOVA table. So in this ANOVA table, what we're looking at uh, this is the answer. It says some of the res summarize the results in the NOVA table. You can cut and paste this out of this uh, Excel document into your Word document for your response to Part A, as long as you interpret the results. But what we're looking at here is either the F value compared to the F critical value, or more efficiently, this P value. And if P is low, reject the HO. But there's three different P values. So in this case, the P value is 0 0.000918. This corresponds to the sample, which are the rows. So this is the alcohol consumption. This is the p-value that corresponds to alcohol consumption. And since this is less than our alpha value of 0 0.05, we are finding that the alcohol consumed does make a significant difference on the number of driving errors. Similarly, the columns, the columns are the sleep deprivation. And we find that on the columns, this is the E is times 10 to the negative fifth. So slide the decimal point five places to the left, 0 .00040 0, and then 784. That is also less than alpha. So we have a significance on the uh, alcohol consumption. We have a significance on the sleep deprivation. But when we get down here to the one that says interaction, 0.829, that's not less than alpha. So therefore, we do not have any interaction going on between the sleep deprivation and the alcohol. Each one of them is actually contributing towards a difference in means, but they're not interacting with each other. All right, so what does that mean for us over here? If appropriate, conduct additional F test, estimate effect sizes, and use Tukey's test. Now what I'd want to do is, now that I've kind of run both at the same time, now I'd want to do a one-factor ANOVA test on the alcohol consumption, and then do a one-factor ANOVA test 
on the sleep deprivation, where I've consolidated those data into a single element in order to test this further for the F test, the effect size, and the Tukey's test to tell between which two categories of sleep deprivation which is kind of where you're summing these up by the columns instead of the rows and turning this into a one-factor ANOVA problem. All right, so that's all I really wanted to do with our Excel sheet. Now I'm going to jump into SPSS. So in SPSS, you actually have to enter the data a little bit differently. Over here, I've typed in all of the numbers, the 03133546243325475. All of the number of driving errors are all in one big long column over here, as opposed to in several columns and several rows. And then I've put next to it the alcohol consumption. So this score of zero corresponded to alcohol consumption of zero. This score of three corresponded to alcohol consumption of zero. This score of one corresponded to alcohol consumption of one, et cetera. And then in the next column, I put sleep deprivation, which is the zero, 24, 48, 72. So each one of these driving errors has a row and a column header, and that's what's going in these next two columns in SPSS. You'll also notice that I made drive errors a scale variable, and I made alcohol and sleep deprivation a nominal variable. They're naming the categories. And you do that under the variable view. I also changed these to have no decimal places, and then under measure scale, nominal, nominal. So this is all setting up my data, and now I'm going to run the uh, two-factor ANOVA, and we're going to compare the ANOVA table that we get to the one that we had in our Excel spreadsheet. So in SPSS, in order to run two-factor ANOVA, two-way ANOVA, I'm going to go to, instead of compare means, there's only the one-way ANOVA on here, I'm going to go to the general linear model, and I'm going to do the general linear model that's univariate, because I only have one dependent variable. The dependent variable is going to be the means that I'm comparing, which is the number of drive errors. The factors are the ways in which I'm sorting these into groups. So that's the alcohol and the sleep deprivation. It's my sorting or factor variables. There's a whole lot of other options that you have over here. In particular, we could look at a post hoc analysis. But we don't know. Well, we do know because we ran this in Excel. We're going to do a post hoc analysis for alcohol. We're going to do another post hoc analysis for sleep deprivation. We know this from Excel because we found significance in both of those areas. If you were doing this only in SPSS and you hadn't already done the Excel, then you might want to just run this without the post hoc analysis first in order to tell where the significance is. And then you go back and you run it a second time in order to run the post hoc because you're only going to do the post hoc analysis if you have two or more groups which we do in both cases in this one, and if there was significance. In this case, there's two or more alcohol groups, there's two or more sleep deprivation groups, I mean more than two, more than two alcohol groups, more than two sleep deprivation groups, and therefore we are going to use a post hoc analysis on both, and we're going to run the two keys test. All right, so I've set up my um, inputs here. I don't really need to look at the plots, although they might be interesting to look at. We can just say uh, plot uh, alcohol on one axis and the sleep deprivation as the separate lines. And uh, let's just say OK at this point. All right, so what you get down here is your between subjects factors. This is your ANOVA table. And it's a much bigger ANOVA table than even that we got with SPSS, although what we're looking at here is the inter the alcohol the sleep deprivation and the alcohol, the asterisk in SPSS is the interaction. So it's these three rows, alcohol, sleep deprivation, and alcohol interacting with sleep deprivation. These are the three that I care about. So if you go over and you look at your F values, 9.164, 14.537, 0.534, .5 those should correspond to the same F values we got when we did this in Excel. Let's check it out. Right, so here's my F values, 9.16, 14.53, and 0 0.553. 0 0.534, 14.537, 9.164. So the F values turned out to be the P values, 0 0.001, rounding to 0 0.000 and 0 0.829. Here's my 0 0.829, this is the number that rounds to zero, and here's my 0 0.0001. 
rounded to the fourth, the third decimal place. So the p-values agree, the f-values agree. We got the same result out of SPSS as we did in Excel. This is my ANOVA table. This is what I would export out of SPSS as a response to question A. But it's interpreting these p-values, the 0.001, the 0.000, and the 0.89, which is where the decision comes in. Now we're going to go down and look at our post hoc tests. So we did actually know that there was significance, and now we can actually look through this and compare the alcohol against the alcohol and see where the differences kind of live. So we're looking at this column of sig values. These are the p values, and we're looking for values that are less than 0.05 because that was our alpha value. So there is a significant difference between 0 and 2. There was not a significant difference between 0 and 1. There is a significant difference between 0 and 3. The difference between 1 and 2 is not significant. The difference between 1 and 0 is not significant. But the difference between 1 and 3 is significant. Significant, not significant. Not significant, significant. Significant, not significant. Right? So this column of numbers will tell us the where the differences between the number of alcohol drinks is actually significant, and that's the result of the two keys test. It sure beats doing this by hand. This isn't really giving us the effect value, but we can take this mean difference, the difference between the means, and use the formula in the book to calculate the effect size in those cases where the significance was um, less than alpha. We'd only want to compute the uh, Cohen's D value, the effect size, in those cases where the significance was less than alpha. If I scroll down even more, you're going to get another copy of this um, Tukey table. This one now we're looking at sleep deprivation. So I'm going to get these sig values over here, and this will tell me where the sleep deprivations were significant or not significant. So it shows that between 0 and 24 hours, there wasn't really a significant difference in the number of driving errors but there was a significant difference when you went out to 48 hours against zero or 72 hours. Not significant, 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 not significant, 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 not significant. So even going from 24 to 48 hours was a significant difference. Going from 48 to 72 was not. All right, so that's how you interpret these two keys test, and uh, that's how you do most of question 18.12, your homework. The only part that I didn't do was this additional F test. You could actually consolidate this and run a one-factor ANOVA test. And in SPSS, it's a lot easier to do that because if I go back to my input window, if I wanted to run the F test on just the alcohol, I have it all set up to do. I just kind of ignore this sleep deprivation. So now I could go to Analyze, Compare Means, and just do a one-way ANOVA, where I look at the drive errors as the dependent variable, and I look at just the alcohol, for example, as the factor. And you could do the post-hoc analysis on this as well, do the two-key test, and press OK. And, and basically, I'm going to get the one-factor ANOVA test, where I'm only looking at the ANOVA. And then here's that multiple comparisons, the two keys test, and you get, you, get, you get those same sig values coming out here. So if you did the multiple ANOVA, or the, the two-factor ANOVA up above, it's not really necessary to do additional F tests because you already got all the information that you need. Only difference, again, is that computation. The thing that they ask for is to estimate the effect sizes. We did the two keys test, estimating the effect size, you'd want to scroll up and find the formula for effect size, the Cohen's D, and just use that formula. It's probably up here a little bit further. Anyway, go up and find the Cohen's D value, which uses that, that difference between the means that we saw in our output window on SPSS, the difference between the means, just showing up over here, and quotient it out by the variance or the standard error that you got of this. So take this divided by that, um, and you're basically going to get your um, Cohen's D values in those cases. All right, well, I'm going to end this video at this point. I hope this has been helpful. You at least got through part A. I showed you two different ways of doing this very quickly with Excel and then with SPSS. I have a little bit more work to do in part B, but the other two questions in Chapter 18 are mostly contextual in nature. Hope this helps, and I hope I see some of you tomorrow. Have a good night.